On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Holy Spirit Challenge. This one small change we make should be Holy Spirit inspired. There might be changes we want to make, but is it the change the Holy Spirit wants to make? Because if we're making the change that the Holy Spirit wants to make, first of all, it'll be a change that'll have the best positive in impact on our lives. I just want to talk about the call to strive. Every one of us is called to strive. We see this in the Gospel of Luke. In chapter 13, someone asked Jesus, Lord, will only a few people be saved? Jesus answered them, strive to enter the narrow gate. That's Jesus' response when asked, you know, are a lot of people going to be saved? Are a lot of people going to get to heaven and become saints? Jesus doesn't give any, you know, percentages. He says, oh yeah, about 55%. Or, or most, or he, his answer is strive. I think as Christians we can hope that everybody or almost everybody eventually will be saved. But Jesus' emphasis here is, let's not worry about percentages, strive. Strive to enter the narrow gate. And we also know that the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. The Lord is asking us to give all we've got, not just a little bit of your strength and a little bit of your mind, all. Be wholehearted in your seeking of the kingdom of God. Now, it's important in the spiritual life for us to understand the part we need to play in our spiritual growth and progress in our own sanctification. There are two elements to spiritual growth or to, to the work of, of, of grace in our life, life. One is passive and the other active. And I'm using technical terms that the spiritual writers write about. The passive part and the active part. The passive part of the spiritual life is, is the most important. And what it simply means is that we need to let God be God in the spiritual life. We need to be passive, not active, passive. We need to submit ourselves to God's work in our life. You know, a good analogy is the gardener. You know, most of gardening or growing fruits and vegetables and whatever else is just letting nature take its place. You know, if the gardener is constantly looking at the plants and grow, 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 come on, and, and you know, sun and, you know, light bulbs and more fertilizer and more water, you know, kill the plant. Let the plant simply grow. The gardener has a part to play, but it's a small part compared to just letting nature take its place. Or another example, I've used this one before, is the surgeon. You know, when the surgeon is doing surgery on us, or maybe something as simple as a mother removing a, a splinter, our job is to be still. You know, stop moving, be passive, so that I can get this done as quickly and as simply as possible, our mothers would tell us. And so, again, it's, it's important for us to understand that our own sanctification you know, if we want to become the saints we're all called to be, the most important thing is to let God be God. It's, it's primarily His work, and we need to let Him do His work. And a, one of the Scripture passages that speaks about this is in John 15. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And everyone that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. The Father is the gardener, the vine dresser. He prunes, he, 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 he helps the branches that are doing, uh, doing well, and, and that's his work. And so in our lives, when we experience the Lord's pruning, we should be submissive to it. 
We should be surrendered. Lord, if you're purifying me, if you're pure, uh, pruning me, do it. I surrender to you. Another scripture that speaks of this passive work or letting God be God is Psalm 51, the great psalm of repentance. Many of us are familiar with Psalm 51. It's the psalm they say David wrote after he had uh, fallen with Bathsheba and killed Uriah. You, do you know that story? You know, David was supposed to be at war. Instead, he was taking an afternoon siesta. He wakes up, he sees a beautiful woman bathing, and he, he, he makes love to her, uh, but she's married. He commits adultery with her. She gets pregnant. David tries to cover it up. He's not able to, so he sends Bathsheba's husband Uriah into battle, into the front line, has the troops pull back, and Uriah is killed. And then the prophet Nathan calls David on it, says, hey, what you did was wrong. And David repents, and he writes Psalm 51, but it's interesting, this beautiful psalm of repentance is actually David giving God a to-do list. In Psalm 51, David says, Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. Blot out my offense. Wash away all my guilt. Cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me with hyssop. Wash me. Make me whiter than snow. Turn your face away from my sins. Blot out all my guilt. A create, clean heart create for me. Renew your spirit in me. Restore my joy. Rescue me from death. Open my lips so that I may be able to proclaim your praise once again. David gives God a to-do list. That's his way of repenting, and that's because David is wise. He knows that without God, we can't do anything. Even repenting is a question of submitting ourselves, surrendering ourselves to God's work. Again, like the child who, who falls in the mud and scrapes himself and gets dirty, he has to run to his mother and allow his mother to make things all better. And David had this wisdom. He understood the passive element in the spiritual life. Now, of course, there's also the active element to our spiritual growth. We don't just simply, you know, surrender to the Lord and do nothing, but rather there is a part we need to play. But again, the active part of the spiritual life, our role, the active role, is, is even st then still a cooperation with grace. It's kind of like a sailor. If you want to cross the ocean, you can't row across the ocean. Apparently a few people have, but they're the exception. If you want to cross the ocean, you need the power of the wind. You need the sails to, 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 to carry you across the ocean. But as a sailor, you can't just sit in your sailboat and do nothing. You need to adjust the sails. You need to steer. And so crossing the ocean, it's still the power of the Spirit carrying us. We just play a minor role. So our active role is still a cooperation with grace. Grace is always primary. And, uh, and again, because the Lord says in John 15, 5, without me, you can do nothing. One of the most important uh, things to remember in the spiritual life. Uh, but the saints, they were masters at cooperating with God's grace. They knew that they had a mighty wind behind them. They understood that God's grace is super abundant. God gives us always more grace than we could ever handle. But the saints were good at cooperating with that grace, allowing that grace to carry them uh, to where the Lord was calling them and so that their lives would be, lives would be fruitful. Now, a scripture that speaks of our need to cooperate with grace and to play an active role in, in working out our salvation, as Scripture says, with fear and trembling, is the parable of the talents. Let me just read to you uh, the beginning. Jesus says, It'll be as when a man who was going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one to each one according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off, dug a hole, 
in the ground and buried his master's money. You remember that parable? Now it turned out good for the person who took his five talents, traded them, and made five more talents. He was rewarded. The master was pleased. And the person who had two talents and traded them and made two more talents, the master was pleased. He entrusted him with more things. But the person who dug a hole and put it in the ground, the master was not at all happy because he didn't make use of the gifts that he was given. He didn't play his active role that he was called to um, with the gifts that he was given. And so indeed, we do need to cooperate with grace. There is an active role we need to play. And again, the saints, they did that. They allowed the wind of the Spirit to carry them. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. I want to share with you just some classic wisdom about uh, playing our role in growing in holiness and virtue and sanctity. I've read a lot of spiritual books and, you know, a lot of uh, books speak about the need to pray and to, you know, to, to do good things and to fast and to keep vigils and all of those wonderful things. But if you really press, you know, the masters of the spiritual life and you say, listen, I want to grow. I want to play my part in cooperating with grace, like practically. Let's get really, really practical. How do I do it? And again, the classic wisdom, and this is in, in Catholicism, in all of Christianity, even in other religions, and even self-help books and all of that. This is classic wisdom. We know the Bible has a whole section of the Bible called the, called the Book of Wisdom. It says, Seek Wisdom. This is classic wisdom. What we need to do is we need to work at one thing at a time for a specific amount of time and seek the Lord's Spirit, His grace, to figure out what that one thing is. To, be, to have a discipline in our life of making one small change at a time and let those change become virtues in our life or weeding out of vices in our life and over a long period of time we we receive this ingrained uh, discipline this ingrained virtue and you those of you who have our little treasure in heaven booklet this is something that i've been encouraging all of us to do again we can break it down number one work at one thing at a time. Now obviously as we grow in the spiritual life, the Lord is doing all kinds of things in our life. Just like those plants, they grow naturally and wonderful things, but our part is to, uh, and again the classic wisdom is choose one area in your life that where you need to change. Not two, not three, one, and work at that one area. The second thing is make it a small change. Many of us has re have resolutions. I'm going to get up at 4 a.m., run 20 miles, eat a fruit breakfast, and only salad the rest of the day, and da-da-da. It doesn't happen. It doesn't even happen for one day, let alone for the rest of our life. And so to have the wisdom to make one small change and to work at this small change for a specific amount of time, not to just say, you know what, I should start doing push-ups every day and do it for three days and then you forget about it and that's, that's it. To say, no, for the next... Now again, they say when you're building uh, habits or trying to break bad habits, the recommended amount of time is between 21 and 40 days. What I recommend people do is work at one thing a month, 30 or 31 days, because it's easy to remember. What's the virtue you worked on last month? What's the virtue you're going to work on this month? 
So again, a specific amount of time, my recommended time is one month. And then next, this one small change we make should be Holy Spirit inspired. There might be changes we want to make, but is it the change the Holy Spirit wants to make? Because if we're making the change that the Holy Spirit wants to make, first of all, it'll be a change that'll have the best positive in, impact on our lives. And so we should ask the Holy Spirit. And secondly, the Lord always delivers what He orders. So if He's asking you to make a change, He will give you the grace to make that change. Guaranteed. The next uh, thing that's needed is a daily reminder, or ideally a daily prayer, praying for the grace to do this. And those of you who have the little Treasure in Heaven booklet, I saw a little boy who had his Treasure in Heaven booklet here. Uh, in, in Treasure in Heaven, there is a little prayer. It's called the Freedom Prayer. This is another prayer I wrote, and it's all biblical. Every day I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You promised, Lord, that you would set the captives free. I confess, Jesus, that I am a slave and only you can break the chains that bind me. I repent of relying on my own strength. Without you, Jesus, I can do nothing. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to set me free from that one thing I'm working on this month. Come now, Holy Spirit, and clothe me with power from on high. Give me the grace, Lord Jesus, to walk in faith today, confident in your love and mercy. Amen. If you pray that prayer every day, you'll actually remember what virtue you're working on this month. Sometimes I get to my parents and say, what am I working on again this month? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. So again, there needs to be a daily reminder. And then finally, this is my prayer I wrote today. And this, I've been kind of praying this in my own way, but today I wrote it down. And those of you who have a copy, it might even come up on our screen if we're lucky. This is the prayer that I recommend you pray at the beginning of every month. Holy Spirit, what is the one small change you are giving me the grace to make that will have the biggest positive effect in my life? Or something like that. You know, Holy Spirit, show me. Show me what one small change will have the biggest effect in my life and that you're calling me to make. Because again, there's no point in trying to do something on our own. Oftentimes, again, the changes we think we need are not the most important changes in our life. And the possibilities for things we can work on every month are infinite. You know, you can make a decision this month, I'm not going to talk to that person at all. Because that person could jeopardize my marriage. I'm not going to talk to that person at all. Or you might say this month, I'm not going to use the computer at all after supper. No computer in the evening. Once I've had supper, no more computer. Or you might say this month, I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to sit in a lawn chair and I'm going to look at the birds for five minutes every day. Do you know that looking at the birds is a biblical commandment? Jesus commanded us, look at the birds. Did you know that? Look at the birds of the air that neither sow nor reap, yet their father takes care of them. How much more will the father take care of you? It's a biblical command. Look at the birds. Or again, an infinite amount of possibilities. Think of one, ask the Holy Spirit to show you. What I do every month is I ask the Holy Spirit to show me, and then I write down 10 possibilities. And then I kind of pray, I look at them, I kind of put check marks around beside ones that are kind of really a good possibility. And then finally I circle the one that I really feel the Holy Spirit is asking me uh, to work on. And so, so again, this prayer, we'll, I'll try to get it into our, two th our next Treasure in Heaven uh, booklet. Now, some people, they hear this and they think, you know, that's wonderful, Father Mark, but what you're describing is painfully slow. Like, I want to become a saint, I want to grow, and you're telling me to work on one small thing a month? Like, at that pace, I'm not going to get anywhere. Well, that's not true. Because I'm going to tell you something, the Holy Spirit's pace always wins the race. The Holy Spirit, it's kind of like if we're, you know, stuck in a jungle and there's all kinds of paths. The Holy Spirit knows the most direct, simplest, easiest route to freedom. And the Holy Spirit's pace is always leisurely. 
And I use the word leisurely very in, in the philosophical sense. The Holy Spirit's pace is always leisurely. A leisurely pace is a pace where we can actually enjoy being. Some people are so busy doing, they're not actually able to enjoy the present moment. The Holy Spirit's pace is always such that we're able to contemplate the gift of the present moment and the gift of reality. We're not in a little other world frantically trying to do things our own. The Holy Spirit's pace is very enjoyable. But most of us, we want to run faster than the Holy Spirit. We're gonna, we say, Holy Spirit, your pace is too slow for me. I'm in a hurry, so I'm going to run ahead of you. And guess who wins the race? The Holy Spirit. And so again, it's a slow pace, but it's an extremely effective and efficient pace. I've been doing this for years. One small change every month, I ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives me changes that have the biggest positive in effect in my life. Sometimes it's only months later that I realize, wow, the Holy Spirit actually knew what He was talking about when He gave me that change because that small change changed everything for me. And so this is something I'm encouraging all of you to do. Some of you are saying, are you trying to tell me how to live my spiritual life? That's exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> because... Because again, it's the wisdom, it's the wisdom of the ages. You know, if you want to grow in virtue and holiness, if you want your life to experience lasting change, you need to work out one thing at a time. And so I just want to end, you know, as we contemplate the saints with St. Paul. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24, Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race? But only one wins the prize, so run as to win. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. You know, to work on one thing a month, that's a discipline. Every athlete exercises discipline in every way. They do it to win a perishable crown, but we an imp imperishable one. Thus, I do not run aimlessly. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. No, I drive my body and train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. You know, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in their number. I don't want to be disqualified like St. Paul says. I want to run the race with, like, with the discipline of an athlete. I want to play my part. I want to be able to sing, Oh, when the saints go marching in, Oh, when the saints go marching in, Oh, Lord, I want to be in the number. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in the number. When the saints go marching in. Amen. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on the Holy Spirit Challenge, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1858. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the radiance of God's love. And one day, brothers and sisters, every one of us will be immersed in the light and radiance of God's love. And hopefully, that's an awesome experience. Hopefully, when we're immersed into the fire of God's love, we simply praise the Lord.
I have a couple of notes to read to you today, and I believe they will bless you who so faithfully support Food for Life. The first viewer that has written in has written in from Manitoba and writes, Food for Life is very enlightening to me. Many of your teachings are what I really need. Thank you. Catholic programs are not numerous. It's like a desert here, spiritually speaking. We are planning to tape your program and share it with friends. A second viewer writes, a couple actually, and they say, enclosed is a donation to help spread the gospel of Jesus. Your ministry, Food for Life, has been spiritual food for us. Where we live, it is very dry in a spiritual sense. We are waiting on the Lord and need lots of encouragement. We've been taping your program for years. Thank you, and please, please keep the good teachings coming. You don't know how much it encourages us. And certainly these letters are an encouragement to us at Food for Life. When we hear this kind of feedback, it really just challenges us to continue on. The whole purpose of Food for Life is to share the words, the gospel of Jesus, because in His words are life and life-giving water. I think of the scripture in John 4.14, 4, Jesus Himself said, Whoever drinks of the water I shall give him will never thirst. The water I shall give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. And that is so true. Spiritually, when we give our hearts and our lives to Jesus, we, not need, we need not to be spiritually thirsty again. And that's the message we seek to convey on Food for Life. By God's grace, Food for Life is Canada's longest-running Catholic television program. That has been made possible through God's grace and provision, and God has used people like you to support us in your prayers and in your financial gifts. If Food for Life has been a blessing to you or has ministered to you in some way, and you would like to make a contribution to help us continue sharing these life-giving words, this life-giving water, we would invite you to write in to us at Food for Life. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1858 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on The Holy Spirit Challenge. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We ask you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post-dated checks or through our website, to help us continue the Food for Life ministry. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life. And our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. Thanks to your faithful prayers and tax-deductible financial support, Food for Life is the longest-running Catholic television program in Canada. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the radiance of God's love. And one day, brothers and sisters, every one of us will be immersed in the light and radiance of God's love. And hopefully, that's an awesome experience. Hopefully, when we're immersed into the fire of God's love, we simply praise the Lord. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.